Hello, Internet. I am Corion, your witch in residence here on YouTube. And I just got back from seeing Deadpool and Wolverine. There are a lot of pieces to unpack here. But before we get too deep in, I just wanted to let you all know this episode is sponsored by Durham Pagan Pride Day. That is right. I will put links in the description as well as to a video promo starring me. I would really appreciate you guys pushing and trying to come out and checking it out. I might have some cool things to, to pass along on it. There may be an opportunity to be in a video with me. Come on out. Come check it out. It's going to be a blast. Now, with that obligatory ritual out of the way, let's talk Wolverine and Deadpool. Now, the first thing I want to address is, can anyone tell me exactly where Ryan Reynolds ends and Deadpool begins? Because having watched a lot of the interviews and pieces leading up to this movie, I'm having trouble distinguishing where these two lines are. Um, he's a fantastic comedic actor, and I think he's great. But he really is kind of Deadpoolish, And I think that's kind of funny. Now, Hugh Jackman, on the other hand, I mean, Hugh Jackman is not the character of Wolverine. But, you know, in our hearts, we kind of know he is, right? Because he has that, that passion, that anger, that drive, and yet that sorrow that revolves around it. And... I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit. There is an acting style called the method. Now, for those who have heard the term before but don't really understand it, the idea is you kind of walk a mile in the character's shoes and get to know them like you know yourself. You, For example, let's say you were in a movie about hacking like Angelina Jolie was in Hackers. She spent a good year hanging around with actual hackers, learning the trade and learning how they do what they do so that she could sound right and feel right in the role. The idea is similar to the concept of write what you know. This is about acting what you know. And I worry that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman might both be method actors after watching this. Um... The next piece I want to talk about is family and what that looks like. Look, Wade's family in the movie, they're a bunch of weirdos and screw-ups and people who have his demented sense of humor. But he acknowledges that they're family and he wants to do better because of them. And that's a whole piece on family by choice, which... I feel is more important sometimes than blood family because we can't always rely on our blood family. Not really. But we can always rely on our chosen families. And I think it's important to remember that. I think it's important to understand that it's okay to have a mom or dad in the group that takes care of everyone and builds them up. Because sometimes we need that. And sometimes we don't always get that from our, our normal parents. So keep that in mind. Look for the ones that are genuinely there to guide and help you. Because they will. Because we all will. Right? I would definitely like to think of myself as everybody's kind of eccentric uncle who's kind of cool to hang around with at the family function, even though the rest of the family doesn't hang around with them. The last piece I wanted to talk about, which I thought was really ingenious and cool, is spoilery. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have it spoiled, pause the video now, come back to it after you've seen the movie. Okay, I'm giving you this one warning. Is one chance to avert spoilers. Okay. Warning over. We're getting into it. 
Chris Evans, upon hanging up the shield, said he would never play Captain America again. And while I don't like that, I do respect the reason why he did it. And the reason why he did it was because it was such a terrible burden on him to live up to the standards of Captain America that he was having difficulty doing that in real life. That seeing everyone put their hope into him was too hard to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I get that. I respect that. Like, let's be honest, the dude got into acting to probably see his face on the screen, occasionally, you know, get some time with a beautiful woman, and have fun being a Hollywood actor. He didn't get into it to become a real-life superhero. And I get it. I also think that he probably did what he did and got out when he got out because, let's be honest, being a hero to others all the time is hard. How often have we seen our heroes have some dark deeds in their past that come back to haunt him? I can see that Chris wouldn't want to take that risk, right? Who would want to take that risk of being the guy that everyone looked up to and then has a terrible, terrible fall from grace? So when he put when he hung up the shield, he said he was going to do it for good. And I respect that. That's why seeing him come back as his other superhero he played, the Human Torch, was that much more fun. Because it's a fey promise, isn't it? He promised he would never come back as Captain America. He said nothing about Johnny Storm. And that was a fantastic move on his part. In fact, if you take a look, all of the heroes that show up in this were all heroes from the Fox timeline that have been, in their own way, snapped away into the, you know, the Marvel timeline. And getting an opportunity to see some of them, again, in their roles was actually really great, right? We got to see Shatterstar. We got to see Gambit, who never actually got a chance to be on screen the way we had hoped. Seeing Wesley Snipes play Blade again was fantastic. And his comment about him being the only Blade there is was so much more poignant considering that the movie would have almost wrapped by the time the news came out that there wasn't going to be a Blade movie. So consider that for a second, that they must have last second added that joke just for the hilarity of being able to be that Wesley Snipes and have that kind of line and have that humor, right? We got to see X-23 again, which was wonderful. She's not my favorite character in the, the you know, the comic books, but seeing the character be there and actually build up Hugh Jackman's Wolverine a little bit was fantastic. Seeing the TVA used correctly was wonderful too. It's not often that we get to see that. And all in all, this is probably the best add-in to the MCU we've gotten in a long time, which actually agrees with the line from the movie where they say that. This is what the Marvel movies need to do. They need to stop trying to reinvent the wheel for their own unique world and just tell us good stories without trying to change the characters. Okay? Give us drunk Iron Man coming to terms with his alcoholism. Give us a Thor who has the capability to be a god, but sometimes is just a man. Um, you know, give us some of the, the more interesting characters from the universe that we just haven't gotten to see in an interesting light yet. Okay? We deserve to see a comedical version of Moon Knight as well as the serious and dark one, right? We deserve to see a non-hyper-feminist She-Hulk. We deserve to have the stories 
that brought us to the table. If there's a lesson to be learned from Deadpool, it's this. Dance with who brung you. Okay? They are finding now that movies and TV shows that were not faithful adaptions of the original source material are not succeeding at the rate that faithful adaptations do. Recently, Halo had to stop after two seasons, and that was a series that the diehard Halo fans didn't come out for after seeing how badly it was butchered. So, should we start insisting on faithful adaptations? Yes, we absolutely should. Does that mean that there isn't room for an Elseworld story so long as it's clear that it's Elseworld? I don't think that that's the case. I think we can absolutely have Elseworld stories like that. The Joaquin Phoenix Joker, I think, is a perfect Elseworld story about the origin of the Joker. It's not the Joker that we know. It's a different character taken in a different direction, and I don't mind that. What I would mind is if Joker was pretending to be part of the DC universe, and it's not. It's a self-contained story. And just like main timeline stories are great, having side stories, having Elseworld stories, having what if is fantastic too. Just if you want to tell a story that isn't in line with the existing media, make it a what if, okay? Make it an Elseworlds. I personally have big issues with communism. I, I've... My family suffered under it, and I'm not a big fan of that banner at all. But Red Sun was a great ride. Okay, it's a fantastic comic book, and I would enjoy reading the comic book and watching the animated uh, feature of it routinely because it was so well done. But if they tried to introduce communist Superman into the main DC line, I wouldn't watch it. If they tried to change the character from being a corn-fed Iowa, you know, uh, Smallville, Kansas dude to something else, it's not the same story. And that's great as an Elseworld, but it doesn't belong in the main line. And that's how I feel about it. I'm a bit of a purist that way, but I also see the importance of telling the stories you want to tell in that world just make it clear that it's not the same world, right? Don't try to hide behind, oh yes, this is a real whatever episode and just go with it. If, if Discovery had said, this is set in its own separate timeline, it's its own thing, it has none of the, the weight, none of the gravitas of the legacy of history that it comes with. This is something different. This is something new. I would have had zero problem with Discovery, right? If they had said this was an alternate version of Picard, a what if for Picard, I would have been fine with it, okay? Dance with who brung you, okay? Make it clear. Don't try to hide. Don't try to play games. Don't try to get fame falsely. Okay. Nobody enjoys being lied to. And they are now in a world where everybody can communicate at the speed of light. And if you do it, somebody will post it and there will go your opportunity. You may get 12 hours of fortune and glory, but that's all you'll ever get. Whereas timeless stories like the insanity of Deadpool, the joy of the first Iron Man movie, the fun of several of the different Spider-Mans we've gotten, those are timeless. Those will continue on. Lying to us won't. And to be perfectly honest, I think that is the greatest takeaway from Deadpool, is not... The moral of the story of this movie, because I think the moral of the story is 
see how many times we can splatter blood on a screen. But that it's if you stay true to the character, if you stay true to the idea of the story, if you stay true to the truth of the story, then you will continue on and you will become timeless. And that's what we're all looking for. And that's what we're all looking for from our media. Guys, I want to thank you so much. It was a blast seeing this movie. I really appreciate you guys. I am looking forward to the opportunity to potentially see some of you at Durham Pagan Pride. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.